So here we have this beautifully backdated 1975 911 with gorgeous long hood looks in Riviera Blue, one of my favorite colors. But that's not what makes this car truly unique. If you look underneath the steering wheel, you'll find two pedals. That's common in today's Porsche world with PDK and Tiptronic, but to find two pedals in a car like this, introducing the Sportomatic. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Best of all, it's free to do so. We're here with Charles Navarro at Ellen Engineering, and that beautiful long hood actually belongs to him. And so I noticed the car because of the beautiful color, but then I peeked inside the interior and I noticed, man, there's only two pedals. And wait a minute, on the gear shift knob, it shows um, park, it shows reverse, then it shows L, D, and then D3. Yep. So P, park, obvious, you yep. put it in park. Uh, reverse, obvious. Uh, L, is that low range? That's a, technically it'd be a first gear. First gear, okay. Um, what's real neat with a Sportomatic is the, the gearing. Really in low, you can get to about, oh, 75 mile per hour from a stop. So from a standstill? From a standstill all in one gear before, before you shift. That's it's a, a long gear. It's a really long gear. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, you, have, you have L and then you have D, yep. which would be what, third gear? D would be uh, second gear. Oh, second gear, yep, that's right. Yep. Second and gear. And then for some reason, we don't know where D2 went yep. because there's no D2 on the knob. Correct. You go to D3. Yep. And uh, with this model year, so it's a 75, so it has a three speed Sportomatic. Earlier models uh, with a 2.4, a 2.2, uh, or a 2 liter would have had a four speed. Uh, Sportomatic, which was 901 based, where a three speed is a 915 based. So early 911s, there was not a true automatic. And I think in the automotive world uh, during the late 60s or even before that, you know, there were mm -hmm. automatic options for vehicles. Introducing in 1968 for, I believe, $280, you could order the Sportomatic option for your 911, and then it ran into, I believe, the early 80s, where you even found them in 914s. Yep, you could that you could order a 914-6 with a Sportomatic. Very rare. Uh, you don't see them much at all, but it was an option you could order it. Now, the Sportomatic is not an automatic at all. No. Uh, it's probably best known as a semi-automatic or yep. manumatic. And uh, how does it all work? Like a good ex example, Volkswagen called it an auto stick or automatic stick shift. And you still have to row through the gears yourself, but it has a torque converter as well as a clutch. So the general idea is once you get going and you come to a stop, you can leave it in gear. You don't have you to So go you just press on the brake? And press on the brake, come to a stop, and then once you need to go, just start accelerating. You don't have to go into neutral. You can leave it in gear. Uh, so t take us through zero mile an hour to maybe 60 what you're doing and then when you come to a light like what are the actions that you're actually doing the action you just obviously when you when you're downshifting just like in a manual car and you're slowing down you can row through the gears and go backwards downshift until you get into drive i always go into low because i really like the extra oomph yeah on, uh, that first gear gives you l gives you um but when you get going you just start accelerating and whatever shift point however fast you want to accelerate uh, whenever you want to shift. And it's a fairly large drop when you go from low to D, okay. and then even larger drop when you go to D3. 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 So from what I've been told, and, and I found out that's not actually correct what I thought, people all said, oh, don't keep your hands on uh, a Sportomatic shift knob. And I thought it was like, we were talking earlier, those lamps from the 80s where like you touch it and it triggers something. It's not actually the fact that you're touching it that triggers the transmission to engage the clutch. It's actually, you have the switch yeah. here. Yeah, so in the shifter assembly, the actual shifter has a pivot point in the shifter, and then you have this contact. It's kind of like points in an old distributor. And basically, when you grab the shifter, it actually will make Disconnect. contact or, 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 or break or. contact right. with those points in there. And when that happens, there's a vacuum servo in the engine bay, and there's a vacuum reservoir. And then this canister right here, the vacuum line goes to it and then it will physically operate this lever that's, there's a lever assembly here and the clutch is in here. So when 
that contact is made or broken, that will then trigger this, which then triggers the actual operation of the clutch. Oh. And, you, and there's actually an adjustment on the vacuum servo, so if you want it to shift or the, operate the clutch quickly, you can speed it up or you can slow it down, depending on how you want to drive it. It's not something you can do at the cockpit, but right. with a small screwdriver, you can go to the back and make little adjustments to tweak it to your driving so style. So my commercial vehicle background, this looks very similar to like an air brake on a tractor trailer. That's, that's basically what it is. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Okay. So instead of your foot actuating a cable or hydraulics to move and engage the clutch, this is what the system is using to Correct. engage it. Yeah. And because I guess inside you don't have a way to manually put it in neutral, that's why it needs the it needs this part of the, the system. Correct, yeah. So the torque converter, unlike uh, other torque converters, it had a really high stall speed, like almost 3,000 RPM stall speed. So actually, if you look at, let's say, a 75 model year, the 0 to 60 time for a Sportomatic car was actually faster than a manual car. You were shifting less, and then you were into the power band right off the get-go of the engine because of the high stall speed torque oh. converter. So why aren't there more Sportomatics? They were misunderstood. Uh, these trigger points, or the uh, contact points, can be finicky. Um, also, if people don't understand that you can't leave your hand on the shifter because basically... Um, you would engage the clutch. <laughs> basically, the car would start bucking uh -huh. if you have your hand and just on, off, on, off bucking, and it'd freak people out. Mm. Um, so you just know you can't rest your hand on the shifter while you're driving. Um, other things that there's a lot of adjustments here. There's lots of fine adjustments with the clutch. And as it wears, you have to have somebody that knows how to adjust this uh, to make sure you have the correct uh, uh, free play in the clutch. Now the good news about, they are rare, but just like everything Porsche, they're still supported. So if you yep. find a vehicle that's a Sportomatic and you happen to like its characteristic, you can still get parts for it. In yeah. fact, th th this part here, is yeah, a Porsche part. That's a Porsche Classic part, and same with a clutch, that you can get the clutch discs for them. Um, the nice thing, everything's pretty robust. Um, when I had this rebuilt, it didn't need a new uh, um, pressure plate, was fine. Uh, you can still get throughout bearings. And torque converter? Torque converter, they never go bad unless you accidentally drop a torque converter. Physically converter. Physically them. damage a torque converter. There's nothing to wear out, nothing to rebuild. Transmission, anyone that can build, rebuild a 915 or a 901, can rebuild this. Uh, there's really nothing special about it. Um, that's it's just different. But uh, yeah, they're they're actually very uh, robust transmissions. Um, and there's two versions. There's two two versions. The earlier cars had a four speed that mm -hmm. was 901 based, and the later ones had a three speed that was 915 based to handle the increased horsepower. And is the later model the more preferred one? Uh, actually, the there's just not that many of the three speeds. Uh. You rarely see three speeds. You see four speeds come up for sale all the time, mm -hmm. and there's more parts available for the four speeds than the three speeds. Again, because they're just didn't make as many, and there's a lot more parts that are, aren't available for this where they're available for a four-speed. Well, there you have it. Added a little bit to your Porsche trivia, the Sportomatic.